Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian here at the Excel Center in London where we are covering the DSEI show, the Defense and Security Equipment International. It's the world's number one gathering of land, air, sea, cyber security uh, systems in the world. Our coverage here is in partnership with DSEI and Clarion Events, who puts the show on. And we have with us my old and good friend Francis Tusa, uh, defense analyst, editor of uh, Defense Analysis, one of the world's, uh, I would say, most insightful, certainly Britain's most insightful uh, defense publication. Uh, and for all of you who are wondering whether or not he is related to Sash Tusa, who is on our podcast, the short answer to that would be, yes, he is. Uh, and, and, so, uh, and, and, and both great folks great conversationalist, but also um, great analyst. Francis, you've been following British defense for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, what do you make of the message uh, Secretary of State Michael Fallon uh, has always been one of the most bullish spokesmen for British defense? Uh, to hear him speak is, is really inspirational. A lot of the right message is delivered. But from your standpoint um, and our standpoint, we've been discussing this well before the Times story came out about um, uh, the cuts going up to the cabinet office. Uh, you and I have been talking about it for years. We were concerned that the uh, Liam Fox, when he was defense secretary and focused on closing the black hole, as it was called, that 38 billion pound gap, uh, was, was fraught with potential challenges. Talk to us about how large this gap is, because many people in that room found it a little discordant to be that bullish, given that each of the services is proposing cuts right now. What's the size of the hole, and why has that hole developed after we were all told it had been plugged? Well, you mentioned a black hole under the previous uh, but one Secretary of State. Um, that was largely uh, filled. There is a new black hole, and it's caused by two things. One, the services have behaved, let us say, entirely as expected or disgracefully, whichever way you'd like to put it. Less, it with less discipline, let's say. Okay, with less discipline, and they have packed their own budgets with programs, entryism. They say, right, what's the minimum money we can get this program launched with? And by the way, when the bills really fall to you in three years, four years, five years, I'm going to be retired, so I'm not going to have to do anything about it. And on that calculation of what the services say they want and when they want it in service by, they are between 20 and 30 billion overspent over the next 10 to 12 years. The second part of the equation, as important but overlooked, um, you, we have heard government officials say, well, of course, a lot of the equipment plan, 178 billion, which is meant to be spent over the next 10 years, somewhere in the region of 20 to 30 billion of that money is reliant on savings. And at the moment, the MOD's uh, record of making savings is pretty bad. And I've calculated the shortfall on savings is between 15 and 20 billion. Put them together, you've potentially got a 50 billion pound black hole. And, and then you've also have the drop in the value of the pound, which is make everything more expensive and hedging ran out a long time ago. All right, two things, the MOD doesn't hedge. If we are talking about an active financial instrument, there is no such thing. The hedge, as it's called, is they say to the Treasury, can we assume this will be the rate of exchange? And the Treasury goes, yeah, fill your boots. Um, I have to point out that if they get the hedge wrong, does the Treasury pay them money? No, it doesn't. So bearing in mind, still at about 130, we're mm, off their plans, we're all done on $1.55. 25 cents, what's that, about 18%. That is one of the biggest hits the budget's got. If I told you that for this year, when the pound has been down at $1.25, $1.30, they're still assuming an exchange rate of $1.45. And next year, they're still assuming $1.40. You have got a ministry that, quite frankly, is delusional on the impact of foreign exchange. I, and when, when it was talking about the hedge, even friends of mine inside, and I think we're talking maybe sometimes to the same folks, were telling us that it was 143 or something is where it all ran out. I mean, after that, there was no currency hedge left. And, and you know, basically, although they published three years forward, just come back to the fact, if they have costed a program, by the way, the P8, the whole budget is worked out on the fact the pound will be worth $1.55. Right. It's not which means someone somewhere has to go and find between 200 and 400 million pounds. Okay, on AH64, that program, again, it was all budgeted on $1.55. They're having to find somewhere between 175 and 300 million. These figures, out, and forget about JSF, which is the absolute budget buster right. of the lot. And to be fair, on a previous occasion, Sir Michael Fallon said it was actually the biggest threat to the budget and the biggest threat to defense in Britain higher than the growth of Russia, China. So that, you know, there is an occasional degree of reality that peeks through, but it's very occasional.